Hi, welcome back to the Procreate Basics series. My name is Hayes. I'll be walking you through today's tutorial and today is all about selections and today is actually episode 17 already. So today we'll be learning all about freehand selections, how to select within a group, how to invert selections and also automatic selections and rectangle and ellipse selections as well. But before we begin, remember to like, comment and subscribe. And now let's get started. To start today's tutorial, let's launch Procreate and I have a project here ready for us to play with. So for today's project, we are just going to add some tattoos to a face. So to access the selection tool, you have to tap on the selection button which is right here, this S sign. Now usually, what do we do when we select something? Usually we will paint it, we will erase it, we will smudge it and one more thing that we can do after we select something is to move it. So we can also move something once we have made a selection. So here we can see that there are a couple of options here. So let's go through them one by one. So let's move on to the freehand method right now. If I tap on freehand, I can actually draw a selection. So once I have this selection ready for me, I'm just going to tap on add. Then this becomes a selection already. If you can see, there's zigzag signs here. Whatever is zigzag means it's not selected. Whatever is not zigzag means it's selected. And you can actually change the visibility of that using preference. So if I just turn this selection mask visibility up and you can easily see it on the screen now, like this is selected. So then I can drop in another color for my tattoo here. So now I have another tattoo here that was made using the selection tool. Alternatively, I can also start drawing more shapes and tap on add. And then I can draw even more shapes like a triangle and tap on add again. Draw a circle, tap on add. So now I have three shapes already ready for me to color and I can just drop them in. I can even paint on them. So let's say I want this to be a flower and I want the circle to be different. Now I can actually go back to the selection tool. If you tap on add, it means you're adding to the selection. But if I tap on remove, the next selection that I make will be removed from it. So now this is already removed and I can give it a different color now. So the result will be something like this. Other than painting, you can also apply adjustments to them. Like I can just apply and change the curve itself, make this part brighter. Literally, you can do almost anything with this selection. And the most amazing thing is you can select within the group. So now I'm actually doing everything on a layer. So let's say I have this portrait and the new flowers that we made in a group already and if I turn it off, I'm turning off both layers, right? I can actually select the group and make a selection out of the group itself. So if I do something like this and then now I can actually move it. But you can only move and transform these selections but you can't apply any adjustments. So let's say I want to apply a blur to this group. If I tap on it, it will ask me, I have a group selected. I have to open the layer and pick a layer instead. And I also cannot paint in it because it's a group. So the only thing that I can do if I make a selection in a group is I can move them only, like this. So then you are actually moving the selection of the entire group itself. So now let's say that I have a moon. Let me just draw a moon real quick. So now I want to change the eye so that it becomes brighter just like the moon. So all I have to do is select the eyes, tap add, I'm going to select the other eye now and I tap add and then now I can apply my changes. So now my eyes are actually brighter now but then I want to keep the current selection because now I want to adjust the face but I don't want to adjust the eyes anymore. So basically what I want is to select the face minus the eyes that I've already had. So there is a very very quick way to do that. I can just tap back on the selection tool and then if you see here there's something called invert. So invert means going the opposite direction. So if I tap on inward, now my face is selected and the eyes just now is no longer selected. So this can be really really quick for you to switch back and forth between the selection itself. So now I can adjust the face itself. I can make the face brighter like this. And if you get our selection, you can see it's already adjusted like that. So this is one way for you to learn about inversion when it comes to selection. 
and you can get really comfortable with inverting selections so let's say i'm gonna demonstrate again doing the love here i tap on add to confirm the selection now i'm gonna tap on invert so now the entire face is selected except for the love and if i get out of selection i have something like this now and now let's talk about copy and paste so if i select part of the face i can just quickly tap copy and paste and then right away you can see that the selection has been pasted into a new layer automatically and this is how you can quickly copy and paste selections that you already made alternatively you can also do the same thing by sliding down your three fingers and then you can see you can either clear it if i clear it it's just going to delete it and i can also copy and paste so if i do that copy and then i can then go into paste so it will essentially do the same thing like just now but it's just quicker to access this function through the selection tab so now i have a moon here and i want to make some changes to the face lighting so let me just quickly freehand the forehead some parts of the cheeks the nose and some cheeks here so now i have a selection ready for me but if i adjust the curves right now it's going to be very harsh the lighting and it's quite terrible to look at so now we're going to look at a new function get back into selection tool and this new function that we're going to look at is called feather so what feather does is it actually blurs out the edges of the selection itself so let's tap on feather and i'm going to increase the value and you can see that the selection is enlarging and getting blur at the edges and let's apply the curves again so you can see that it's a lot more gradual now and it's no longer as harsh as it was before but we can go even softer with this let's apply the feather again and this time i'm going to put higher and then now i'm going to apply my curves again so you can see now the lighting changes are a lot more gradual because it's a lot more faded out so now it seems like the moon is causing a glow on the face so that's how you can use feather to manipulate your portraits so let's say I'm going to pick the lips and I know that I'll keep changing the color of the lips because I can't decide what the color of my lips for example. So I'm going to tap on save and load and you can see it as a selections tab. Hit the plus sign and now our lips is already saved as a selection. So even if I'm working and I change my mind, let's say I change it to purple now and then i start to work on other parts of the face then i decided that oh my god this lips is not turning out well so i'm gonna have to change it again but if i select it i might not be able to select the exact thing already so now i saved it and it's good because i can load it so to load it just tap on save and load tap on the selection and now i can change back my color to where it was before and now we have our original lips back like nothing has ever happened so we can continue adding more and more selections here like i can add really really crazy amount of selections you can have a lot the only thing you can't do is you can't rename the selections to tell you what it is but you can delete them so you can delete the selections so any time that you selected something and you don't want the selection you can just tap on clear to clear the selection and other than freehand tool you have the rectangle where you can select like a rectangle or an ellipse where you can select like a circle so if you drag the ellipse it will be a loop sided circle or compressed but if you want it to be a perfect circle all you have to do is hold down one finger and then you automatically snap to a perfect circle like this so in automatic mode you can make selections that are similar in terms of colors or value so if i tap here you can see it is automatically selecting all the darks in the image which is her hair and some of the eyebrows and the eyelash as well now all this while we've been using a lot of add and remove to add selections and to remove selections other than that you also need to note that if you're in the automatic mode and you selected something already yes you can keep adding to the selection but you will not be able to to remove anything you just keep on adding so remember that the remove function does not work in automatic mode if you want to fine tune the selection itself like for example right now it's not selecting all the hair so let's say i want to select all the hair right so if you start over you can tap 
and then slide left to select less you can see the slider up here and slide right to select more and at one point it will just start to select everything in the image so you can try and fine-tune just exactly how much you want to select so let's say here is fine and when you're selecting let's say you accidentally selected the face so you can just tap with two fingers to undo so let's say once you're happy with the selection I'm just gonna tap on my brush now and then drop it in to change the color of her hair and that's as easy as it works because it automatically just already select the hair for you so let's say now I have recolored the hair and I feel that I am still missing some areas here that I want to color it orange. So how do I get back to the selections mode? I just tap and hold the selection tool like this and then it will bring back up the selection again with all your options available and now I can continue to select this. Then I'll just drop the color in again to fix whatever that I did not fix just now. So this is an easy way for you to get back into your selection tool to make modifications to your selections. So the last thing you want to look at is the color fill. For the color fill in automatic mode, once you fill it, it will just fill whatever that is the similar value or color according to the selection threshold, just like the same thing in the selection for automatic mode. But for freehand, under the color fill, you can actually draw a selection, tap on add and you automatically fill it with a color for you. For rectangle, it's the same. You create the rectangle first and it will fill it for you. For ellipse, it's the same as well. So when you're using the color fill, you can still pick colors. So let's say I'm in a rectangle tool and my current color is black. So if I create the rectangle, it's going to be black. But if I tap on my portrait and pick a different color, it will actually change to that new color. So you can do that if you're in the color fill mode. The last thing that I want to talk about is the quick select function. So to quick select, let's say I want to select just the fishes. I'm going to tap on my layer. I'm going to double tap it and hold it. And now all the fishes is being selected and I can easily paint on it or move it if I want to. Thank you so much for watching guys. Tomorrow marks a new journey for us because we'll be learning all about layers in Procreate. So remember to catch tomorrow's tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you tomorrow. Bye!